Hi, wij welkom aan allemaal van jullie wat op YouTube ingeskakel is. Dit is voor ons een groot voorraad om zondag zijn boodschap voor jullie te kunnen brengen. Dank jullie dat jullie hier naar kijk, share het gerust. Onthou alsjeblieft om te subscriben naar ons channel op YouTube. En dan kan jij een notification krijgen elke keer als hier die boodschap opgeleid wordt op YouTube. Mag hier die woord je blijven vandaag. Pleasure. Tonight the message that I'm sharing is all about the ring. Like in jewelry. And while I'm, while I'm on, on this subject, there's something I want to share with you guys first. So tonight I'll be reading from Isaiah 3 and Luke 15. We'll be reading all around it. So Isaiah 3 and Luke 15, you can keep your fingers there or keep a spacer or something. So... Because I'm talking on the subject of the ring, which is jewelry, I thought it good to first talk on something that's been bothering me. I hear people saying that you're not allowed to wear jewelry according to the Bible. And before I just talk too much on the ring, I would just like to touch this subject as well. So I'm not trying to convince you to wear jewelry. I'm just... I'm just trying to say something else. Let me say it. So we're going to start in Isaiah 3, verse 16 to 23. And it says the following. Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a jingling with their feet, therefore the Lord will strike with a scab, the crown of the head, sorry, of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover the secret parts. And in that day, the Lord will take away the finery, the jingling anklets, the scarves, the crescents, the pendants, the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms, the rings, the nose jewels, the festal apparel, the mantles, the outer garments, the purses, the mirrors, the fine linen, the turbans. So I think I missed the part there. It was the, the bracelets, the veils, the headdresses, the leg ornaments. I missed that part, if you read with me. So this, this verse is used a lot to say that God does not like jewelry. He hates it. And we should not wear it. <clears throat> so... Obviously, they, they are using this out of context. And let me, let me e explain this to you. I'm just going to read verse 16 and 17 again and just give you an explanation of what these, these words mean. So, verse 16, Moreover, the Lord says, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, which means to be prideful, and walk with outstretched necks. In other words, they think that they are better than others. And wanton eyes, which means that they deceive men. Walking and mincing. Now, this, this is when, I don't know if you've seen it. Let me, let me show it to you. It looks like this. Okay, so that's called mincing. They give like these small little steps. And um, as they go, making jingling with their feet. In other words, they jag, brag with the jewelry that's on their ankles. Therefore, the scripture says, therefore, the Lord will strike, therefore. So, in, in, in other words, this is all about being prideful. James 4 verse 6 says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. I don't want God to resist me. Psalms 138 verse 6 says, Though the Lord is on high, he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. The amplified version says, but the proud and haughty he knows and recognizes only at a distance. And this is the first scripture where, where I saw that this could mean that God would rather be distant from me if I am proud. 
So the, the, the reason for this taking away of all of this jewelry was, was not the jewelry. It was the hearts of the people. And God wants us to have abundantly, 2 Corinthians verse 9 says, and God is able to make all grace, grace abound to you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things. Sorry, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. But you see, pride is not a good work. Pride is not what God wants from you. God wants us to be good stewards of what he gives us. He wants the world to see that he's a good father and that he provides for us and that he gives us in abundance. But when he gives us in abundance, he does not want us to become prideful. So my conviction for the jewelry is the, the, the following. You may wear jewelry if you want to. Nobody's going to tell you, you you should wear it. If you want to, you can wear it as long as it does not stir up pride in you. And if you find that it does, just throw it away or put it in the cupboard for how long ever it takes for you to just get over that pride. In fact, if anything in this universe stirs up pride in you, just move from it. It's not a part of you. Just move from it. It's like when, when, when Jesus spoke on, on sin and said, if your eye causes you to sin, cut it out. So if anything on this earth causes you to sin, if it's finances or if it's a nice car, if anything causes you to get prideful, just move away from it. Because when you move away from it, remember God moves away from pride. And when you move away from that, throw away your pride, then you're moving closer to God. So, yeah, I just, I'm just so scared of being prideful. So, 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 so scared. There's, I just don't want God to be distant from me. To rather look at me from a distance. That's not what I, what I want. And I'm, I'm thinking of the song now, From a Distance. Pastor Jan always has this thing. When, when anybody sings the song or when he hears the song or somebody hums the song, it's like, that's not the truth. God is not a distant God. And that is very, very true. God is not a distant God. But let's move on. We're talking on the ring now. So we got the jewelry thing behind us. Luke 15, verse 1 to 3. We're going to start at the beginning of Luke 15. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, Now just while we are, this reminds me of something Pastor Jan said this morning. Be careful of people that know the scripture, but don't know Jesus. Be so careful. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, and then he goes on to speak of the parable of the lost sheep. And then he speaks on a parable of the lost coin. And then a parable of the lost son, or the prodigal son, as some of you may know it. Now, the story of the prodigal son, I just want to stand still on that story for, for a while. It's about a man who had two sons, and one of these sons decides he wants everything, half of what, he's, of what his father has is, is going to be his anyway sometime, and he wants it now. So his father said, well, I, I'm going to give it to you. So he gave it to him. And the son went, went away, he traveled very far, and he, he really started spending his money on prodigal living. So eventually, all his money was up, he became, became poor, he became so poor that pig's food was actually good in his sight. And he remembered how well his, 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 his father's slaves were sought after, and he thought that he would rather return back and just be taken in as a slave. 
And that's also what he, he told his, his, his dad when he came home. He said that I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be your son. But let me just be your slave. For I know at least you will provide for me. I know that I will at least have food to eat, good food. And we see in Luke 15, verse 22 and 24, we read further, so we just skip that whole chapter. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be Mary. And there's a whole part to that story after that as well. But I'm just going to stop here. I want you guys to remember that these are parables. Jesus spoke on these parables after he was accused of spending time with sinners. And all three of these parables, the sheep, the coin, and the prodigal son, are something got lost, it was found again, and in all three of these stories we see rejoicing. So these are, these are people that spend time with Jesus. People who are spiritually, spiritually lost and dead, and, 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 and Jesus says, well, it's worth the time trying to save them rather than spending time with people that's already saved. And when a non-believer makes a choice to follow God, I wanna tell you there's a celebration in heaven there's something that happens in heaven. And this is what Jesus also tries to, to, to teach through all of these. If you turn back a page or two and you go to Luke 15 verse 7, the parable of, of the 99 sheep, you see the, the following. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Luke 15 verse 10, the parable of the lost coin that was found. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And I was so privileged to be able to attend a service at the potter's house in Dallas, Texas. And while I was there, one person decided to follow Jesus. Just one. That one person came to the front. And as that one person came to the front, something happened. The whole family just went bursting out in a joyful praise. The band started playing. There was, there was drums and the bassist and everybody and they started singing. And there was just, people were jumping up and down and, and praising and shouting and, and it was such a joyous occasion. That was the best representation that I've ever seen of what happens in the heavens when someone gets saved, when someone makes a decision to follow God. I'll never forget that. That'll be in my mind forever and ever and ever. And when someone gets saved, I see an image in, in heaven where, where, where God says, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Let us eat and be merry for this. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. I want to jump to Matthew verse 7. Oh, sorry, Matthew 7 verse 11. You don't have to read with me. If you then being evil now to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? And I just see this in my head. I see how the father puts a ring on this saved person's finger and says, you're my son. And this is not far, far-fetched. In the Bible, a ring symbolizes authority. And always when authority was given, not always, but, but mostly, a ring would also be given as a token of investment of that authority. As an example, I'd like to just quickly read Genesis 41, verse, 40, verse 41 and 42. It says, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. 
So here, this signet ring symbolizes authority given. And in Matthew 10 verse 1, we see the following. And Jesus summoned to him his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. So Jesus doesn't actually give them a physical ring, but he, he, he gave them authority, which is represented by a ring. So I want to... I want to end off with the following. I know that almost everybody wears some kind of a ring. And I don't care if it's your wedding ring or if it's your grandma's ring and you have a lot of sentiment to it or whether it's just some kind of jewelry. I want to link something tonight to that ring. I want you to remember something, four points. I want you to use your ring as a reminder. The first thing, and I hope you're making notes on this. Number one, you have authority. Jesus gave you authority. Remember, ring symbolizes authority. So whenever you look at your ring, remember that you have authority given by Jesus over unclean spirits, diseases, and infirmities. You have authority. Number two, you are sent. Jesus sent his disciples after he gave them Authority. You don't just get authority for nothing. You are sent. And that's so important. Matthew 10 verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And so many times we, we stand on, 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 on um, authority and say that we have authority. But what do we do with that authority? Do we live it out? Do we use it the way that God wants us to use it? We are sent. Whenever you look at your ring, don't forget that you are sent. When you, I pray that you will look at your ring and the Spirit will, will, will remind you that you are sent. That when the Spirit come, comes and tells you in your ear, pray for that person. Wherever you are, even if you're walking in the mall, I don't care. I pray that your, whatever ring you're wearing will remind you of that, will remind you that you are sent to use your authority that you've been given. Number three, you are the bride of Jesus. So we use rings as, as wedding rings. And we should remember that we are the bride of Jesus. We should be living in a way that when he comes, we will be presented to him holy and without blemish. And I pray that when you look at your ring, you will be reminded of that. That you will be reminded of what kind of life you should be living. Or just reminded that, hey, you are living the right life. What should you be doing? What should you be busy with? Shouldn't you be busy talking to Jesus while you have nothing to do instead of seeing what's on TV? Just a reminder. May your ring be a reminder that you are the bride of Jesus. And then number four, you are a son. I want, you, I want that ring to remind you that there's a father in heaven who is good, who loves you and is ready to give you good gifts and he's waiting for a deeper relationship with you. You are a son. You have a father. That's the four things. If you missed one, you have authority is number one. You are sent, number two. Number three, you are the bride of Jesus. And number four, you are a son. And now, I want to say the following. If you have not made a choice to follow Jesus, I want your ring to remind you that God is waiting in heaven with his angels to celebrate your homecoming. The angels are waiting to make a joyous noise. Heaven is waiting to rejoice for that moment when you decide to say, God, here I am. I want to live for you. And I want to tell you, this family will rejoice when you make that choice. Every part of this family will rejoice with you. 
And while I'm ending off with this, I just don't want to pass this opportunity just to be able to lift up your hand and say, God, Jesus, this is me. I want to make a choice. I want to make a choice and say that I want to follow Jesus. I want to learn to love Jesus. I want to see the heart of Jesus. I want this in my life. I have not been busy with all the right things. But I want the right thing now. And if that is you, I want you to just start a joyous occasion in this house. If that is you, I want to call you out and just say, Lord, this is me. I want to know you more. I want to know you more, Lord. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat myself a hundred times, but if there's anyone in the house that wants to make that choice tonight, you're welcome to come to, to the front. So at least I made the opportunity. <laughs> so let's, let's close in prayer. God, what a privilege to be in your house. Lord, what a privilege to know you, to lift up your name, to make you great. Lord, I pray that we will go out and that we will lift up your name in the world, that the world may see you, that the world may get to know you, Lord. I pray that any ring that we are wearing will remind us of who you are, Lord. I pray that it will remind us of everything that we've been speaking tonight, Lord. I pray that it will remind us that we have authority, that we are sent, that we are the bride of Jesus and that we are a son, that we may know that we have a father. Even if we don't have an earthly father, Lord, that we may know that we have a father who loves us. And I pray that that will work in the hearts of people, that they will go out and listen to your voice, Lord, and move out and do what you ask of them in the name of Jesus. Amen.